Hey, what's up you guys? Sam here. Welcome back for a little recap video. So in this video, I'm going to go through all of the things you guys have said that you've learned from my City Fix video. So on the community tab the other day or the other week, I asked you guys, what are the main aspects you have learned from my City Fix videos? Um, I wrote my own list, but I really wanted to see what you guys said. So we're going to go through all of the main things that you guys have said. Now, of course, there's going to be a lot of other things that I don't mention in this video, which are also important. So if that's the case, just let me know down in the comments. I'm sure other people would love to see um, other people's main things that they've learned as well. And me too. So let's get into it and check out all of these different aspects. Okay, so the first tip is to make sure you have a good amount of different connections. So if we look at this overhead image right here, for example, we have the highway going along here, which is going to carry a lot of the traffic, but we also have a lot of other main roads. For example, this one going through here, this one going along here as well, and even ones going down over here. And basically they're all over. So we have several different types. So we have uh, the highways, the main roads, we have public transport, and we have pedestrian pathways. So we have all of these different options. Now, it's really, really, really great to have lots of different options because you don't know exactly where everyone is wanting to go all the time. You can look it up in the information part, but that's not always going to tell you exactly what they all want. So give them more options so they can literally have more options. But for example, so for example, if we pretend all of these bridges are gone. Let's pretend there's no bridges at all, no pedestrian crossings, no public transport bridges at all. Now let's pretend that the only bridge is this bridge right here. Now you might think that it's the best option to have this bridge right here, but imagine the amount of traffic that is trying to go in through here, all of it trying to get through this suburban area and go through here. All of these intersections, this one, this one, this one, this roundabout, they're going to be completely, completely horrible, congested, and it'll make you want to blow it up. So give them as many options as you can, even if it's just pedestrian uh, bridges or pathways, just make sure you have lots of different connections going in all directions. And speaking of having lots of different connections, make sure you don't actually funnel all of your traffic onto one main road. So instead of um, like I was saying with the bridge, you need to give them more options instead of just giving them one road which you personally think which would be the best option for them. So for example, you might want to funnel all of them onto this road only, but it's going to be really hard to manage because there's just so much traffic. So avoid funneling and give more options. Now the next one is lane management. So there's a lot of different things that we can cover in regards to lane management, but the first one is in regards to this mod up here, the traffic manager mod. So you definitely do need to have this and you will need to align different lanes to lanes. So for example, we have these two lanes here going straight ahead. And then this third lane is used for turning off and that just makes it a lot more simpler. And then the same for when they come back on. So for example, Instead of having this lane here, the traffic might come up here and they might cut across and instead of going into this lane, which is ideal, they might actually cut across like this. And if they're cutting right across like this and they do do that, you're actually going to be blocking all of this oncoming traffic and it's a nightmare. They do this all the time. So this is when you'll need to do this type of lane management. So make sure you have enough lanes coming in. So we have the third lane here for where they are entering and then, and then these two existing lanes go straight ahead. So then that way they don't have to merge in this exact spot here, which can be a nightmare. They can easily merge up here or somewhere way up in the future, but we just don't want them all to do it right here, cutting across other traffic. Another thing to look out for, and just uh, just ignore the uh, little bit of a traffic build up here, but when you have um, highway entrances and exits, make sure you have enough lanes for them down here. So for example, you wouldn't have a three lane uh, exit coming down here, and then this is a, a one lane road. 
then we have a one-way road coming down, one lane, and then it has two different lanes. So that's making it really easy for them, but literally make sure you don't have it the wrong way. So like I said, you might have three lanes coming down here because you might be thinking, well, maybe three lanes is better because three lanes of traffic is going to come out of the highway, but then they're all going to bunch up down here because you don't have enough lanes. So if you are going to do three lanes coming off, Make sure you have three lanes down here and make sure you have three lanes for wherever they're going or two lanes if another one's breaking off somewhere. But just make sure that it is not the other way around. It has to be the right uh, amount of lanes for the other amounts of lanes. Another example would be this intersection right here. So again, with the lanes, you need to make sure you have enough different lanes for where they are going. So if we look at this one here, we have the third lane, which is for turning that way. And then we have these two lanes here. This one can go up here into either lane. And then, the, and then this third one goes over here. So you might just have one lane and then that one lane is obviously going to back up a lot, really, really far. You don't really want that. So by having the actual um, right amount of lanes um, and specific lanes for turning, it's going to allow more traffic to bunch up and then more traffic to move quicker throughout your area. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of, I know it is a little bit confusing, um, but you know, <laughs> I'm trying to recap it. I'm trying to recap it nicely. So again, with the lanes, just to um, really make it clear, if we look at this road over here, so this is a two lane road on either side. So the two lanes would come down here and ideally this roundabout would be two lanes as well. So if this road here was only one lane on either side, then you could get away with having one lane roundabouts. If this was three lanes up here, then your roundabout should be three lanes as well. Don't do it three lanes, then two lanes down here. Obviously that's not going to work because then traffic is going to try and funnel into lanes, they're going to merge and it's going to just be a huge mess. It doesn't really Merging in the game does not work very good, so we want to limit that as much as possible. Another tip is you want to limit the amount of connections on any type of main road. Now, the reason why you want to limit the amount of connections on a main road because traffic generally wants to flow straight through. And if you think about if you're driving and you have to stop at a red light continuously, you get a bit annoyed. Well, I, I know I do personally. So you want to limit as many connections as possible so traffic can flow through a lot faster. So if we look at this large boulevard here, you can see there's not that much traffic on it at the moment, but we have this connection here, this connection here, and this connection here. If we go up here even further, there's only that connection. You can see it is spaced out quite well. And you'll also notice I didn't put any of these smaller road connections on this larger road. So these, there's only larger road connections just to make it simpler and keep the movement a lot faster. Another example would be this road along here. So you can see this is used as more of a bypass road. So again, you don't want to have too many connections. So there's only a connection here, another larger one here. We do have a smaller one here, but that's not really utilized much. Another larger one here and here. So there really isn't much interference for them. So they can flow straight through. So if you do have a main road, um, that is really consistently busy, take off all of those smaller connections. They're not really going to be that important. Make all of, all of your smaller connections on your avenue roads that aren't on your main roads. Now the next one, if you know me, it, I am all for it. It is more pedestrian pathways. Now they are really, really great. You can set up your own mini pedestrian pathway highways, which is something I commonly do throughout all of my cities, for example, like I have done right here. But another reason why it's really great to have these is because you can remove the pedestrians from your actual road. So for example, here I've removed all of the pedestrian crossings. As a result, the cars can flow straight through and they don't have to worry about the pedestrians constantly crossing. And if you notice, pedestrians do cross a lot and they are very consistent. You can see right here, they are continuously moving about. And if just imagine if they were all crossing through here, all of this traffic, it would build up really quickly because they have to continuously wait. 
But regardless of that fact, it's also just great to have a good pedestrian and cycling network because obviously if they are walking or cycling, that's going to be less cars on your main road. And I find a lot of them do prefer to walk. So if you have, for example, a residential area disconnected, maybe there's a forest in between, then there's a big industrial area. If you put a pathway directly straight through, I really think that a lot of them would just walk or cycle straight through there and that's going to reduce a lot of your traffic on your main roads. So definitely, definitely, definitely don't underestimate the power of just doing pedestrian bypasses or bridges, tunnels, just things like that. It's really going to make a huge difference in your city. Now, a lot of you also seem to be surprised of the power of a roundabout. Now, even if your country where you're from doesn't commonly use a roundabout, which is something that people consistently say on my City Fix videos, my country doesn't use it. No one knows how to use it. But regardless of whether your people technically don't know how to use it, the rest of the world does know and they are really, really effective. So instead of doing a just a normal intersection, you can put down a roundabout and I actually think they make your area look more interesting as well because they break up the harsh grid look. So of course a roundabout isn't always perfect, but they do sometimes in certain cases allow traffic to move through faster. Now some people think because the traffic is moving slower through a roundabout, they think an in intersection is going to be faster. But if you actually measure the difference between, between an intersection and a roundabout, even though the cars move slower through a roundabout, they are technically getting through that whole area a lot faster and the flow is a lot easier. Now, the only downside is you need to remember to do your pedestrian pathways because there are no pathways on roundabouts commonly because they're going to disrupt traffic. So make sure you have those pathways as well. So another thing roundabouts are great for are dispersing a lot of traffic in different directions. So if, for example, we look here, if this was an intersection through here, we would have this connection, this connection, this one, and then these two roads right here. It might be a little bit too much for one intersection to handle. So just having a roundabout is going to make it a lot easier. And the bigger the roundabout is, the more connections you can add, the better the flow is going to be. So commonly you only find really small roundabouts in like housing estates. And then the really large ones are for the heavier amounts of traffic. But of course, if you don't want that, you can always put in the time traffic lights. The ordinary traffic lights in the game don't really cut it for most amounts of decent sized traffic. So use the traffic manager mod to set up time traffic lights. Again, make sure you have enough lanes. So you can see here, I have designated lanes for turning in specific areas. And yeah, go from there. You might have to tweak it a little bit, but there's other tutorials on YouTube. I assume that you can go look at to help set those up. Now, something else that a lot of you never really thought of is to just think bigger picture. So your traffic issues are not going to be just caused by, for example, one little road connection or one little intersection issue, or I don't know, a, a bridge or something. You need to think bigger picture, follow where all of your issues are coming from. So instead of just looking at it and think, okay, wow, I don't know where to start. You literally just need to follow each car along, follow, 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 and analyze where all of these issues are coming from. In the future, when you're designing your, your cities or certain areas, just think about the bigger picture of your city. So think about, is this certain road going to be busy? Are we going to need more space here, less space here? Are we going to need more public transport? The earlier that you plan for it, the easier it's going to be because I don't really like to have to demolish too much stuff in the future. So just think bigger picture and it's really going to help. It helps me. Something else you'll want to avoid is any crisscrossing traffic, for example, like this. So you might have um, existing traffic like this that's trying to go straight ahead. And then, then, and then there's this existing traffic that's trying to cut across in front of it. So there's always going to be, there's so many different options to fix that, um, whether it is just giving them different options, giving them um, slip lanes over roads, tunnels, things like that. It's really up to you, but you just, but, it, but it's just something that you want to avoid for the larger amounts of traffic. Again, with the lanes, more lanes isn't always better. Now that's something that I saw 
all the time in City Fix. People thought, if I put down six lanes, hey, that's going to be really, really helpful. But it actually backfires on you. It does completely the opposite. It makes it worse. Now, obviously, of course, in real life, I just have to say this, otherwise 10 million people in the comments will. Obviously, cities in real life have a lot of lanes, but that's because they know how to manage it properly and make it flow and make it flow properly but in the game if you're just going to put down more lanes it doesn't work so for example if we look here this is something that i looked at just before earlier in the video we have three lanes here third lane goes off and then all we have here is two lanes now this is the main highway but if it's set up correctly you don't really need more than three lanes throughout the whole city for example this is an example of what i saw a lot of so we have here a five or six lane on the highway and then what actually happens is you're probably thinking well more traffic is going to funnel down in through here because now we have three lanes but you're actually making three lanes go down into one lane now i guess it's okay if you have three lanes here and then three lanes down here to handle all of that but a lot of the time you would have these larger amounts of lanes going into one lane and you have all of this traffic trying to crisscross and merge at this one spot and it just wasn't fitting correctly so just stick with your three or four lanes if you know how to do it and make sure that you use the lane management to align everything correctly and it should run a lot smoother. And another really important one is just make sure you have enough public transport. I know it seems really obvious but um, it's amazing how many people just forget about public transport. Even just doing a simple train line from, for example, your residential area to your industrial area, it's going to make such a huge difference in traffic amounts. Um, or even just doing a pedestrian pathway, but in terms of public transport, make sure you have a really good network, whether it's, you could just do trains, buses, whatever you want. Just make sure you manage it correctly and you're going to have a really huge reduction in people driving around because they're going to use public transport. And if you really want to encourage it throughout your city, it's a little bit costly, but you can do free public transport. And then of course, you're really going to see a big decrease in traffic. So there we have it, you guys. So this was obviously a quick recap of some of the main uh, things you guys have learned from City Fix. Now, obviously there's so many more um, I didn't want to do a really a super long video because there's too many things to um, go through. But if there's something that, if the, but if there's a really main thing that I forgot, just let us know in the comments below. I know there are things that I, I would have forgotten, but that's why I asked you guys on the community tab, what are the main things you guys have learned? Because I wrote my own list and then I also um, made a list of all the things that you guys said on the community tab. But I think for me, the one thing that really makes your traffic run smoother is just making sure you have the right amount of lanes and using the lane connector just to make everything flow through so much easier. Thank God we have that traffic manager mod because without it, ugh, our larger cities would be such a huge mess and I would not want to do city fix videos at all because it would be too hard. Anyway, everyone, I hope you all got something from this and enjoyed this whole city fix video journey that I've created for not just my channel, but a lot of other channels who are now using the idea, maybe overdoing it too much, but that's their own problem now. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.